<laughs> uh, I, I also, quick note, I, I think that it's even better for Bennett that he's in the top eight now, because I find usually he he's one of those players that will like adapt to how you're playing against him, right? Like if you throw some new hotness at him, he's going to take it, lose to it once, be like, okay, that's what you did and then come back at you with a completely different game plan just to try to spin things out the other way. And oh goodness, is th this is the second Inky I didn't, I've didn't seen. I didn't actually see any of Shizunix's games on ladder. Yeah, me neither. And man, I see why he found a lot of success. You're so right, the Inky. But whoa, 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 the double new water temp temps. So, you know, these guys getting a buff in the recent patch. Nestle getting aquatic whirlwind. Oshiro getting hurry war. So I see he's using these water temp temps, I guess, to perfection. I'm very excited to see. I mean, not a lot of fire temp temps on Bennett's side, but these guys are just heavy, heavy special attackers. So let's see. I'm happy to see these goes. And of course, you know, quarter, we didn't get too many of Amphideers today's tournament. So I'm happy to see one in the quarterfinals indeed. It's a lot of different ways to play Amphitheer. If we look at this team, it looks like this is a very special attack oriented team that Shiznix is playing. We see two potential Sparks users in the form of Amphitheer and Nesla. And basically everything else there can be a Sparks threat. Obviously, Valish, we've seen a lot of physical Valish lately, but it's not like Crystal Spike stopped being a great move. Uh, also, it makes perfect sense banning out the Volfi when you have so many electrics, crystals, and fires on Shiznix's side, mm -hmm. even with the two waters that he's got there. It's like, you, you gotta get that boy out of there. <laughs> that indeed. And hey, starting things off with that Inky. And you know, we saw a little success with J-Dragon on the Inky. But uh, I dare say, we haven't seen too, too many players working with the Inky successfully. So let's see, can Shiznix do the deed here? Inky starting off as the orange side, so maybe expecting something like the Nagas, like the Dorboros, or hey, just some neutral pressure on Takinu too, because maybe that's what Bennett is thinking. Yowler Kinu, almost as good as the good old dynamic duo Gialis Kinu. So that's maybe what Shinjin X is expecting. How does he want to open up? Maybe I feel like one of the things, one of the things that we could be seeing here, uh, obviously Kinu, Kinu Yowler is something that we have to expect. Like he's, he's led Yowler. We have to at least un, like appreciate the fact that we could just see a Kinu drop here and see a plus one plus one on this fat bear. But um, like Obi-10 is the other potential option that we could see there. Oh mm. man, so we see the OCR drop next to that. So that is threatening out the Obi-10 and potentially the Tolkien as well. Even with Heater, the Aquatic Whirlwind to the face and a Sparkling Bullet or uh, uh, Thunderstrike, depending on what style of Inky this is. If it's a special team, then it's likely a spec master, meaning that's probably a T-Strike turn one. Like, you don't want any birds or mentals in that spot. Kino can probably take it just due to its good typing, but oof. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's a lot of damage, as you say. I mean, even if it just goes to Yowler, expecting a turn one show off, but wow, bold play for Bennett. Not scared of a sparking bullet, not scared of a thunderstrike, just trying to get the sea ore online. And you know, these temptems on Shin's side are a bit on the speedier side, so don't like that the sea ore presence. And on the other side, Yowler, one of the slower temptems indeed, so he's thriving in that. So, hey, not too bad, but what do you think the Nagas pick up? Is it just to guarantee Nagas on this team? Because I think Shin has a lot of answers to these, no? I think this is a distraction right like what's the biggest mm. challenge trying to throw yowler into something like this with a lot of heavy aggression it's the fact that you're taking a ton of damage turn one when you want to be showing off if there's this big old distraction to guys being like oh look at me i've got a four times weakness to your mm -hmm. turn one attack then that feels like a pretty obvious ruse <laughs> into something else like maybe an iridescent koish that didn't get banned um that would eat that hit pretty comfortably and allow yowler the space it needs to actually do the plus one attack move uh it, it, that that's one thought i've got the other thought that i have is that shiznix if this is to Cedora, then yeah a, a ton of his team has problems inky's not too fast one of the reasons why a lot of people haven't enjoyed playing it lately like uh it's 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 reasonable speed but it's not like an overwhelming speed and it doesn't have okay. the prio that people usually want to see excluding of course dc beam clearly but um it might not do too poorly inside a Decidor environment, especially in this turn one. I don't expect this Naga to stay in. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you said it earlier, Shin rocking a lot of special attackers. So I dare say this is probably the Thunder Striking version of this Inky. So yeah, maybe that is exactly what Bennett has in mind. Just a good distraction. Let the Yala go with the turn one show off. 
and then start going crazy with some savage suplex that's ashi dashi potentially on either slot doesn't feel too bad but bennett round out the team with two kind ob1 and i believe it was yeah the iridescent course so you know quarter i believe you're 100 nailing it on the head not guys most likely trying to swap out for that iridescence coish but let's see i mean does he want to read it and potentially call the show off and just throw all that impressive amount of damage onto the yowler and hey does bennett want to read the read and leave nagas in <laughs> i mean my question here is what's this nigga is doing if it does stay in right like turn one uh like sure i'm not getting hit by anything I, I don't believe inky has too many good turn one crystal moves but like sure you're you're not like you're still the, the threats are there incidentally this is not a chamomile inky so if it is t-striking if it is a spec master then it's not going to have a blue bar for very long that stamina is mm -hmm. going to fall off the face of the earth but um like my concern here is how how is Nagai's actually doing damage to both the OCR and the Inky? Like, you could probably do some damage to OCR because it's a very frail Tem. Like, usually OCR is hit hard and fast for a reason. But, like, I think Shiz is perfectly reasonable just, like, plowing into Polaris now before it's properly set up, especially since he banned a lot of the things that would be able to give Polaris buffs. Yeah, very true. I mean, you nailed it right on the head there. Nagai's doesn't really do a lot onto the entirety of Shin's side. I mean, half effective against Valash, Amp, and the Inky. So yeah, Oshiara is the only Tempton that would take like big, big damage from the Nagais. So yeah, I wonder, I mean, it was an instant pickup, maybe expecting Shin to pick up some other Temptems, but Shin just having the great, great pick and bans as well. But we'll see. I mean, if he gets a Madness up, of course, it's going to be a bold one. But a mm. Madness book not guys does do a lot. And hey, quarter is Oh, I didn't in. think of that. <laughs> that. That's so obvious. I didn't even think of it. It's just like getting a Madness buff up there. But no, it is a beta burst onto the horse. Gets it down to 54% as the T-Strike is going to punish that hard. Hard indeed. So that was a brilliant prediction. Just saying, you know what? I think Bennett is going to try to read the read, just stay in. But you know, I think he just realized Nagai's, as you said, wasn't really doing anything in the match. So might as well do a clean 46% on Oshiara and make it even easier to take it down. But now the polar bear has an easy clean kill on Oshiara, but it's still going to come at a cost because I believe it should still go last. So Shin should have a clean double up onto it. Will it be enough to take it all the way down? See, that might be questionable. Think, what if we see, yeah, I was about to say Tolkien comes in here because heater means oh. that 2k is a lot less solid because of that burn that drops mm -hmm. on there immediately. Such a good tech when you want to like shift the momentum back to your side in scenarios like this. Like Bennett's got his show off down he wants this bear to stay alive for a turn and actually take some thames down from shizanix's side and yeah no this, this is precisely the point where you want to get your uh token on the board like yes obviously once again you know inky's perfectly willing to go burr right back into this and like throw some more damage onto this very obviously electric weak tem but that's that's just one more hit you're not throwing at the bear that's going to tear your team apart and we still have the threat of iridescent coish in the back yeah very true it could just be a little bait and switch into that coish because yeah you know it does it does get the heater off which is the valley right there but inky with another t-strike oshiara with sir uh sir by tio's wrath online those are two effective moves onto Tukon. So oh. Tukon not really enjoying this board state that Shin has set up so far. So, I keep forgetting about Serbas. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. Um, like that, nothing is going to enjoy swapping in on that on Bennett's side. Like even if even the Obi-10, which is very specially defensive if you build it that way, is really not going to appreciate the spread from the base attack of OCR. The burn is going to do a lot to give Bennett some wiggle room here. Yeah, for sure. For those that don't know, that is a 30% reduction on all the damage, physical and special attack, just because of that tick of burn. So yeah, saving himself some HP indeed. Let's see what Ben has in mind, because a double up like that just might be enough to take it down, but the burn should do... Okay, so it was a, a little bait and switch, swapping into the Iridescence Koyge. Can it eat some damage? Here comes the Wrath, and man, it's such a beautiful looking technique. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. It is also still neutral damage onto the Koish. That's a bare bit of dupes on there. Uh, 
it looks like Shizunix doesn't even take the bait. He goes straight into Polaris, which is down to 10%. He's gonna take down Osiara, but this is not the kind of damage you want. Like, this isn't the sort of sustain that you want out of a Yowler. I feel like Shizunix, despite, you know, losing some of his front line, he's coming up fairly ahead in these trades. Yeah, very true. And you know, we saw right there the Yowler with the double up. He most likely would have died without the Heater Tukon coming in. So very well played for Bennett. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that little 10% would have not been there without those ticks of burn on Enki and the Oshiara. So hey, one tempt him down a piece. What does Shin want to bring in to try to get this Aerodescence Poise out of here? He doesn't really have effective damage. Or wait a second. Is digital so iridescence so fire does double damage right so he doesn't have uh, any of that toxic would also deal double damage i believe actually no toxic's neutral yeah no iridescent gets a bit uh finicky here mm -hmm. it also resists the electric and the nature coming out from amphitheers that is not a very good option out of shiznix although my like this is just a suspicion for me i don't believe this is a very aggressive amphitheer but instead we see the valish which can just jump on the fish yeah i'm just trying to do look uh good damage but to be pointed out yowler is the slowest attempt and most likely on the board so is there a point to save yowler for later down the road i mean oshi dashi will go burr if it was able to go off I don't know if Bennett wants to save it. I think you're better off just saving that HP on one of your backline Temtems and just letting Yowler go here because he doesn't really have too much to do. If he was a bit faster, he could, but being so slow, a simple, I'm not sure. We have to see if it's physical or special, but you know, with all that special damage, maybe one of these Temtems has to be physical for more coverage. If not, just special attack is the way Shin likes to do things. So it could be just a good little crystal dust onto Yowler. We will see it. And then wait, no, no. The concern is that like Bennett's back line does very little into a lot of what Shiznix has. Like we, we, we're seeing potentially three electrics here, depending on what Mimit turns into, right? Like winds don't do anything into that. And the strongest thing on um, uh, Bennett's side of the field is his Tolkien for dealing with those. And in the meantime, we see a madness buff in the face of this. <laughs> okay, this is this is looking like it's very swiftly turning into a one-sided game as Bennett mm -hmm. is just uh, losing ground. Yeah, he's doing he's doing it quite commandingly indeed. Madness buff get the scavenger valley, but hey, it looks like Bennett recognized what was coming and tried to do the best line of play to try to mitigate those further turns. So hypnosis letting the Velash go to sleep for this next turn, this turn and the very next turn, so it doesn't get to pop off just yet. So maybe this is another turn to bring in Tukon just in and get that Fire Tornado online. As soon as the Velash wakes up, but Fire Tornado is a special attack. Velash at plus two special defense. So I'm pretty sure you could definitely uh, live at least one of those for sure. Yeah, even with the staggering base 79 special attack that Tolkien has, it's probably not going to take down this Valish now that it's gotten the madness buff off. Um, my question is, okay, I, I'm not entirely sure whether the Inky's staying here or not. My, my other sort of question with that is, I guess, does Shiznix have any reason for it to leave? I mean, yeah, it's, it's out of stamina, but on this board, do you think he can afford to just rest it there? Or are we going to see something else swap in? Like, what if we have two Valashes? <laughs> yeah, Actually, I imagine. No, that, would, that, would, that would take the Digicoish. My, my mistake. Yeah, it would. It would. It does take the Digicoish, which wouldn't be terrible. At least you have Water Cannon for the Tukon next turn. Uh, but we'll see. I don't think the Mim is coming out just yet. But, you know, to your point, I think Inky's okay resting. Yes, it would take uh, damage from the fire attack. But I believe Bennett focusing more on the Valash next turn. No fire attack online just yet. And then if Inky rests this turn, you got a T-Strike, but no, Shin does. Okay, Electric Tem for Electric Tem. Does this one, you know, they were both weak to fire anyways. So let's see, Digital Stream, all right. Okay, yep, and this does mean that like, you know, since the Fiery, okay, Fiery Heist wouldn't be doing damage. Amphitheory isn't really too concerned about that, um, despite it still being a pretty interesting move. Um, like the, the fire tornado is only now coming online. So now is the point where Shizunix actually has to worry about fire moves. Perfectly easy to just put another electric that, you know, has an actual stamina bar right now into the field in its stead, especially one that like 
can take hits as well as Amphitir. Like its base stats really serve it well for just sitting around and gaining value supporting its teammates. Especially with uh, its uh, trait relaxed that it's basically an unnoticed for HP regen. Oh, this is quite bold. Maybe expecting Velash to swap out, but no, Velash stays in. Crystal Spike will be neutral damage onto the Koi. Scavenger coming up. And hey, a T-Strike will be in neutrally because of the digital electric typing. So not too shabby, as you mentioned before. Quite special defense heavy. But Velash staying in, I believe. I believe Bennett was thinking Velash would swap out. Thinking the Fire Tornado would come in. That's possible, or it was just a fake out as a last minute drive to get momentum, but it didn't work out for Bennett as he taps out after that. No way for him to really come back. Yeah, let's see. So I'm just joining you right there, spectating up. So this is going to be game number two. And hey, this is already a different start here. So oh, Nestle yeah. getting picked up nice and early and potentially paired up with the Hedgen. All right. Ooh, that would be something. Uh, I feel like Nestle gives Shizanex a lot of different things he can work with here. Um, obviously, once again, like the thing that I like about it is it, it is one of the most aggressive of the Sparkers that we have available. Like it can serve as a buff bot it, it, to certain degrees. You can spec it very fast to, to a certain degree. It's got Aquatic Whirlwind, so it does still have the prio necessary to allow it to hit hard and quickly at the same pace as some other Thames that need to do that. But then at the same time, it's got a lot of support options in the form of Strangle, in the form of Tesla, in the form of Sparks, of course, to get its teammates online. And we see the Valish right there helping it out yeah let's see and you know he doesn't really have any immediate pressure on this Valash so I dare say is this madness buff central I mean as we all know Tukon doesn't have a, a turn one fire technique Yowler doesn't have a turn one Oshi Dashi so I don't know I mean Adore Boros I mean you could double into Valash mm -hmm. but I feel like this is a rather free madness buff and wait quarter are we gonna get a Sparks into a madness buff plus three special that, attack <laughs> that might actually be what we're gonna get the wow. only thing i and it's gonna be able to do here is like pick yowler and just try to smork as hard as possible into the valish making it regret clicking it like a beta burst and a clinch mm -hmm. is about the only play i see for bennett on this field yeah and i'm not too sure if that would actually kill i mean after the 30 percent reduction it might actually be very very close it does depend Valash, one of the fastest Temtems in the game. So Madness Buff could go first. If it goes first before the Adore Boros Beta Burst, then of course that plus two special defense will be mitigating a lot of that damage. And then Clinch, not the heaviest, heaviest attack. So I think Valash might live it, but we'll see. It might be kind of close there. Yeah, it's really concerning because as you say, Adore, like, uh, Valash has a very high speed and can get that Madness buff off usually before Adora Boros acts unless you're playing a very quick Adora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very quick. So we'll see. I mean, he could gun down the Nestle just a Toxic Ink is effective damage, but now we're leaving the biggest threat alone, which is Valash. That's what Shinjinex Shizun wants you to do. So we'll see. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen that turn one. Sparks into a madness buff, a lash. Things are going to go yeah. flying cr down very, very fast. It'll wind up being a very quick first best of three, unless Bennett can pull a rabbit out of his hat right now. Uh, this is not an opener you really want to be staring down. Still, though, we're into our game two. Shizunix versus Ice Red. And yeah, no, I, I, I'm liking Shizunix's position here a lot. Camo Nestle as well means that you can spam uh, Thunderstrike more effectively. You're not as hindered by your own um, uh, stamina. Uh, obviously, every Thunderstriker hates being exhausted. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Chamomile, even if it was a Toxic Ink going there, it doesn't get the Toxic Ticks. And of course, just for those Thunder Strikes, no overexerting necessary or able because of the Chamomile. So let's see. This is going to be an exciting turn one nonetheless. Can Bennett do the deed, beta burst clinch potentially? Or does he try to just get set up in terms of his own, just show off and then try to one-shot Ashi Dashi the Valash next turn? But I'm not too sure. I feel like the last. Okay, okay. Okay. So the Emanip was there to make sure that he actually outsped and got some damage onto the Valish fast. This makes a lot of sense. And oh, oh. oh, no. okay. Okay, there's the rabbit. Handcuffs changes this completely, in my opinion. Um, 
So we do see a T-Strike rather than a Sparks. Makes a lot of sense because that's just some actual damage on the board. Instead, this leaves Yowler the space to show off knowing that this Valish isn't buffing and bouncing. And with Token in the back to absorb the Crystal Spikes, uh, no, Bennett actually has a field. Yeah, I love it. You know, for a second there, I was about to say, wait a second, late torment Yowler? <laughs> but I believe that's a little bit too cheese for someone of Bennett's caliber. Not to say it's bad, but I don't think a lot of late torment uh not a lot of people are running late torment currently well let's see you know you're so right madness buff plus two special attack i don't think you could one shot but oh a door burrow stayed in bennett was calling yowler going down but actually yowler's still gonna pop off but lash can't live a ashi dashi here either but i'm still just surprised that that adoro stayed in when uh you had the heater token but i suppose since he knows he, he knew he was going to take out the valish this turn with the yoshi he didn't want to waste that on a chamomile tem and something that was about to go down so it does make sense just letting the adoro die there yeah and hey beautiful stuff as you said letting the rabbit out of the hat and hey it was just the handcuffs really making a big big difference there we thought valash would start getting carried away but the fact that it had to stay trapped in to eat the Oshi Dashi, yeah, brilliant stuff for Ice Red. Let's see what both tamers want to bring in now. So Nessa's still on the board, expecting maybe the Koish to Connor not guys. Hmm. So the big concern here is now Shiznik's on like such a massive back foot. Like he's got the Adorboros to technically take down this Yowler, but Tolkien is ready to come in and it can just throw wind moves at that poor little noodle. And it like, even with its high special defense, it's not gonna appreciate taking those for an extended period of time. Uh, I, I don't know if we see that yet though. Like I think the Koish is another reasonable partner to come in here. Uh, like obviously Bennett needs to be a bit careful because this Nestle will kind of tear apart his team if he's not like respectful of it. All right, and hey, Ben has been quite bold with these Nog guys. So hey, being bold one more time, bringing in the Nog guys, getting that Yowler a bit speedier because of the flip of the speed. And now Nestle does have a potential Thunder Strike one more time. But Bennett, we saw it before, it could be a bait and switch into that Iridescence Koish. But you know, Hedgen maybe can cut. Actually, never mind. It doesn't have any turn one fire techniques, so even the Koish will eat up digital attacks quite well. Yeah, I mean, we could see a Generify here, but gotta go fast feels real rough inside Desidora. Yeah, Ice Renny getting the upper hand currently, so we'll see. I mean, if he wants to read Naga is swapping out, I guess just throwing everything into the Yowler doesn't feel too bad. But I have something to tell me is when people are running Yowler with Chamomile, you do have Hibernate. So maybe the turn after you could Hibernate. Or if you expect a lot of damage coming your way, you Hibernate this turn. Because if you have to Hibernate next turn, actually wait, and the Sea Ore might change that up. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it, obviously it goes first. So yeah, you wouldn't want to Hibernate here. So like I, th I think he's fine just like throwing an attack out, getting mm -hmm. like a suplex on the Nestla maybe, and then just like seeing where it goes from there. The Nestla is out of here. It doesn't want to be on this field. We see the Adorabora swap expecting the suplex onto that. And hey, called it exactly right. So beautiful read for Shiz here. Let's see what this not. Man, I'm impressed. You know, Bennett called the earlier not guys didn't swap or no he didn't swap out his not guys and once again not swapping out but the harmful microwaves doing quite a number over 50 percent but that reactive vial bringing the not guys a little bit more and now is nullified so nothing's going to be doing effective damage so that's not that, too bad i've been enjoying seeing what what things are all running reactive vial it's just such a versatile defensive item uh obviously it can be kind of a double-edged sword here like for instance um if for some reason, Bennett doesn't focus this Hedgen, then, you know, Hellfire would actually be doing damage to Nagai's in the following turn. And it's always something you need to be aware of if you're using Reactive Vial, that it, it nullifies your resistances as well as your weaknesses. So you gotta be, like, a little careful about how you swing that. But I think Bennett's in a fine space here, as he's just gonna size surge that poor Adoroboros. Yeah, and usually Adorboros could hold strong from those, but he was wearing a strange vest. So all that special defense going into the defense department. So just a good beta burst into a size surge will be more than enough. But as you said, this is going to be neutral damage onto the Naga. guys. Hellfire bringing it about half of that HP remaining pool. So not too shabby. But man, this Yowler really doing a number on Shiz's side. 
And yeah, I think Bennett looking quite comfortable here. Is there anything Shinjin X can do? Uh, hmm. Well, honestly, I think Shinjin X is still in a relatively strong position, right? Like this is the kind of turn where you can bring in like iridescent Koish potentially on the guys' side if you're really scared about it, because obviously high harmful microwave will still probably do a reasonable amount, but you also still have Fury up and open. Uh, Yowler is like out of stamina and that's a problem. Uh, like, I don't really know what you swap in here for that. Like, I, I don't know if this is a stamina bug or something, because I could have sworn Hibernate gave you, like, 50% of your stamina back as well. I, on my screen, I have 50%. I have 47.5, oh, okay, yeah, so he does stamina. have some stamina yep. here. Well, that's just a spectator bug on mine, then. Uh, in <laughs> which case, yeah. It, it's perfectly happy staying in here and coming and swinging. Uh, with the suplex back online, I just expect that to land directly onto this Osiara, which alongside a beta burst will be pretty crippling for the very frail horse. Yeah, we'll see that indeed. So a quadric whirlwind does it target down the Yaller? No, just wants to clean up the, you know, take advantage of the nullify, clean up the Nagais, and don't give comeback or value, but oh, the Yowler did indeed rest, you know, Quarter. I wonder if he had the bug too and just hit rest just in case. Because he had 50% stamina to work with. Unless maybe mines was bugged, but I'm pretty sure Hibernate does recover stamina. So yeah, interesting say, rest. I, I, think, I think your screen's the right one there, but either way, that has influenced Bennett's play. As uh the OCR was like only half punished for uh doing everything that it's done so far. I Okay, I still like Tolkien here, but it's a real risk. I think that you kind of have to go to Aerie instead because the problem is Hedgen isn't going to take the heater burn. It's going to be perfectly happy throwing microwaves into that. I guess you're getting burn on the OCR, and I suppose that is what Bennett is hoping for here, and it's also something that doesn't die to Hedgen. Yeah, Nazi Ben, of course, we completely... I it missed, I slipped my mind. It was an overexertion oh, for that hibernate. So, of course, it I couldn't do it. That. So, yeah, well, hey, either way, he's all the way recovered. 72.1% stamina. So now he's ready to go in. Oshiara or anything in the back line, which would be that Nesta will be having to eat the bear or, you know, take the attack from this Yowler. And it's a big one coming. Plus one attack, we will see. There's two con, however. Hmm. The Wrath is online, so I can expect the Koish, but hedging with the fire double damage on Koish, kind of scary, though. Yeah, even though this game is a lot better for Bennett, he's still kind of in a rough position against Shizunix's offensive lineup right now. Uh, as you say, a Fire Tornado combined with a Zerbatio's Wrath is just really punishing for anything in the left slot for Bennett. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm Bennett, I just tornado. Actually, no, wait, the Tolkien doesn't have any hold up. I guess you just wind burst the OCR and pray. I mean, if I look at this, the Tolkien isn't doing nearly as much against the Nesla and others against the, like, as opposed to the Eerie Koish. Neither of them really do much into the back line, but uh, Tol like, Tolkien's better defensively. Koish is better offensively because at least they can mess around with hedging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forces a Jenner fire something with those water cannons. So I like Koish there. But Hedgen also has the answers. I mean, maybe it overexerts, but Shiz just, just could just swap to the back line. So yeah, I agree. Shinjin X looking quite well. But Bennett coming so close, but not close enough. But there's the Generify. Okay, nullified it up. So not taking double damage. But there we go. The Cybertheo's Wrath. How much is it going to do on both of these Thames? Quite enough to take them out, but that was still a staggering blow to Yowler, which is always a pretty good commendation right there. Uh, Suplex is going to come down, though, like a ton of bricks and just delete the Osiara, uh, meaning that we only have the Nesla and the Hedgen online for Shizunix now. This, like, if this pressure can be maintained from Bennett, then this is basically game. My concern here is that Nesla... Nestle's probably taking down Tolkien before all said and done, and a combination of uh, Fire Tornado and T-Strike into that spot means that basically nothing there's allowed to live. Yeah. If that happens, though, you're not focusing Yowler. That's kind of the elephant in the room. Exactly right. He's running a little bit low on stamina, but still has enough to do enough to do, you know, to do a lot of damage. The only thing I'm worried is, of course, with the gotta go fast, the fire tornado would go first. So you kind of, oh, but of course, fire tornado, the yowler, and oh, almost taking it down. 
It drops the hedge in probably just into the... Yeah, no, it takes it out with the tornado combined with the overexertion. And a T-Strike is going to be coming down. I'm almost surprised that I... If that Nestle had an electric storm, this would have been a perfect right? opportunity to... Yeah, I guess it doesn't have an E-Storm because that would have been the perfect opportunity, as you said. But now is a 2v1 situation. As you said, I think one T-Strike takes down the Tukon. And then it's Kush versus Nestla. Nestla, Water, and Electric do half effective into Iridescence. What does Kush have to do some effective damage? Is, is it just uh, like Digi Threat or something? Not Digi Threat, I think it, but Digi it's Stream? Yeah. Like, it, unfortunately, Kush doesn't really have any other options here, especially because the Nestla has camo. Like, you can't Hypno it. You can't uh, try to do anything. You can't Fiery Threat it as well, meaning that you can't get burns on it. So this is just going to be like a T-Strike into probably an Aquatic Whirlwind or something like that, if that's something that this Nestla is running. We've only really seen T-Strike on its move pool so far. Yeah, we were thinking, okay, let's see how much this does. So, uh, oh, that is a lot of damage. 41%, I want to say. Yeah, 41% doing some big boy damage so just two more of those and that was just about 25 percent stamina consumption from bennett's side so i think bennett will be taking this one nestle very close but he doesn't have effective techniques onto this iridescence coish a whirlwind is still neutral, neutral actually, right so yeah did you one little leg in there but as as we can see nestle does not have the girth necessary to, ne to really deal with this it sparks itself Okay, this is something, this feels like a Hail Mary. Like you're getting the sparks up to try to one shot this eerie Koish from this degree. Like I'm assuming Bennett's probably built this thing bulky, but we see the T-Strike healing its back up. <laughs> I was wondering if that was coming out, but if you heal yourself, you're not attacking your opponent. So trying to play the overexertion game, but it looks like Koish saving a bit more stamina because of the T-Strike overexertion exhaust following those techniques. So very close, very ambitious, but I believe Ice Bennett, or I keep saying Ice Bennett, but Ice Red will be taking it home. I think that was one more digital threat. We'll do the remaining of the HP pool. So very good attempt, but yeah, Bennett gonna be making it very interesting all the way down to a game three situation for our quarterfinals run. Unless Aquatic Whirlwind goes for her quarter, is that, is that what Shin is thinking? Uh, yeah, that's what I think gambling on no it's just oh. another t strike <laughs> all out the stamina here but is it gonna be enough and all right the course on ice red side did indeed overexert but everyone overexerts so just a free turn on both sides recovering that stamina man she's uh, so oh, close so man. close but a little bit too far. I mean, he could keep dragging this out, but Koish is at 94% here. Oh my God, he really is just going to keep doing this, isn't he? <laughs> I'm trying to see where the game plan is fully. Because, I mean, you could go to turn 30, but if you don't do damage to the Koish, it's going to be victory on Bennett's side either way. Hmm. You know, at this point, the Koish is just doing damage to itself, right? Just get it to overexert again. It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll right? see. We'll see. I mean, if you could get off another Sparks or something, maybe an Aquatic Whirlwind neutrally does a lot. But we'll see. I mean, uh, I don't see a way for Shiz to take it down. Hmm. Unless the Aquatic Whirlwind that we're anticipating here actually does enough. Um... I, I can't imagine a world in which Shizunix is able to take this back. Sadly, as we've said, uh, Nestla's low bulk has left it relatively unable to deal with the digital stream off this Koish. And it looks like Ice Red uh, getting, you know, catching with the game plan here, expecting a uh, Thunderstrike on itself. Gonna go ahead and rest instead of overexerting, so, you know, no damage onto itself. So yeah, I think Ice Red definitely has this one in the bag. I mean, another T-Strike to go up to 100% doesn't feel too bad. But it's kind of just rinse and repeat. I believe Ice Red will take this down. Good attempt, though. I mean, I'm so impressed by uh, Shinjinek's attempts here, guys. Another T-Strike. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, where is he going with this? Like, if this is Shiz if Shinjinek believes this is an out, then, like, yeah, he's got to go for it. But, um... 
This is this is uh, pretty up there in terms of a long shot. <laughs> you know what? I think if he overexerts and then something like turn 30, you go for a heal and then your HP is higher than 94% you win so maybe that's what shiz is thinking right now you know you drag it out and then if you get a hundred percent hp and now he's at plus two attack oh make I that plus three space to get enough bonuses up to actually take down the koish but the hypno comes down from bennett hopefully putting the kibosh on this on these shenanigans yeah, this is absolutely ludicrous stuff going out here in this quarterfinals. All right, Nessa does wake up. But now at plus three speed, I believe any Thunder Strike will 100% heal it all the way up. So that could be the game plan. Just heal higher than Ben is pushed. Oh, the Hail Mary play, Aquatic Whirlwind. Let's see, 94%. Does actually oh! take it back. The <laughs> into the Aquatic Whirlwind genuinely won Shizmik that match. We were all sitting here like, oh no, this is Forgon. And he wow. brings it back by the skin of his teeth, taking it 2-0 against Bennett, who went undefeated in Swiss. Oh, they are still in. And wow, Nekoblocki is flexing a Luma token against um, uh, Duvan's team. All right, this looks like it's a potential game three situation because it's nice and early. Let's check the turn. It doesn't appear on my end, but so many healthy Temtems. I will go ahead and try to update the scoreboard. Let us know in the chat, guys, if you guys know what turn or what game this is, rather. But yeah, the flex is out of control. Tukon Luma. <laughs> that is yeah. beautiful. Like, I'm looking at this and I can barely make out its actual uh, picture. People were talking about it before, like, you know, the light that comes off of that thing. It's like, dang, okay, that that is a particularly shiny Luma. So we can see that we're on turn three. Yeah, I'm willing to bet this is a game three situation, guys. So Duvon on the ropes, Neko Blackie on the ropes. Winner of this will be progressing onto the semifinals to verge Shinjinex there. So we'll see. It could be another club rivalry with Neko, or it could be Duvon representing himself. Let's see, let's see. So Hedgen and Gialis. And you know, we have not seen Gialis this entire time. So I'm happy someone actually brought up, uh, you know, the king of the old times, if you will. I, I don't think Gialis has really fallen that far. It's gained a new weakness, which obviously is not a really cool thing, but um, it still kicks Volfi real good. It's uh, got a sea bite that a lot of things are afraid of. Mashuk is actually easier for it to deal with now that some of them are tireless, which this one appears to be due to its low stamina and the fact that it's got a plus one attack. Oh, very interesting. So yeah, we could see. And yeah, I have noticed Mashuk's have been a little bit more fragile. So yeah, Gyal's not looking too bad. We don't know. I mean, it's turn three. If this Tukon has been on the board the entire time, Fire Tornado would be online right, right now which is maybe what Duvon is considering about. He does have that fire coach in the back line to really, really eat that super well. So yeah, maybe I that's don't... what Neko is thinking. I was going to say, if I'm Neko, I probably don't want to throw a fire tornado into that without having like a wastewater there to support that sort of uh, double in offensive. Like if you got the wastewater in there, then sure, that coach is melted. But I, I, I got a feeling that Duvan probably wants to save the OCR at Koish to like use together because Lava Wave and mm -hmm. OCR at Whirlwind are just such a devastating combo. Yeah, super, super. Some of the most, if not the most aggressive Temtems in the current meta. So absolutely, I, I definitely feel uh, saving those, especially for the Amphideer Fire. Lava Wave going in on that feels kind of good. Even on the Volfi that just takes neutral damage, even on the Barnji that takes neutral damage, those guys don't want to get a one-two punch from both of those Temtems. So we will see. Now looking at the rest of Duvan's lineup here. So we see that this Hedgen is fresh. We could probably expect a Generify out of it. Although I don't think it's particularly threatened on this field. Like um, I suppose obviously the Gallus, Gallus has got problems here, depending on what the hold, what hold, as you said, the Tolkien has. We don't know that because we've kind of only just hopped in. Um, 
like if we're assuming the fire into that spot, then yeah, Duvon is in kind of a tight spot here. I don't see how you maintain that back line I was gushing about without like bringing one of those waters in and giving yourself over to a Meshook waste water. All right, so Plasma oh. Beam will be enough to take down the Meshook. So, hey, it could have been that swamp, but just trying to throw yeah. some damage uh, onto Never Dukon. mind. So, it's like Tornado comes down instead, so it's likely not got that hold up. The Plasma Beam is something that just slipped my mind there. Digital just distro like surgically uh, removes um, Meshook from the game there. As we saw, that was just a very quick little boop, and Meshook just went down. Yeah, that was the light tap one. I believe harmful microwaves does a bit more damage as one prio, but everything is three prio with the gotta go fast trace. So yeah, just throwing a little digital attack, double damage into melee. So not too bad. That was big. So I would assume with tornado being on last turn, fire tornado 100% on this turn. So maybe we now get the koi swap since we don't have a punishing wastewater to follow that up. So we will see him. It's possible. Also, Camo Two Vine. Sorry, Camo Barnshi. What am I talking about? Camo Barnshi is not something I'm used to seeing, but uh, that, that does basically give you both traits, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so we could definitely assume it. It's going to be your air spec uh, Barnshi indeed. But, you know, this is interesting. I believe Neko is kind of baiting Two Vine. He's saying, you know, I have this Barnshi here. Do you want to crystal bite it? <laughs> I have a fire but tornado for waiting for you. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I feel like Gallus, the problem is Gallus used its prio last turn, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it sharp stabs to the Tolkien, meaning it doesn't actually have a way to hit the Barnshee before it takes a ton of damage. Yeah, of course. I mean, no priority on Tukon or Barnshee as well. Tornado would be on next turn. So, see by Gallus being as speedy as it is, probably mm. still goes first. However, yeah, no, you're going to be definitely. sacrificing it. I... I think Neko's in a position to make that trade, honestly. I feel like Neko's board is a bit more stable, and we see that Neko is, just has no fear. He's gonna go ahead and exhaust the hedge in, trying to get a bunch of stamina off of that as the Plasma Beam comes down, and yeah, no, that that's a one-two punch that's gonna annihilate that barn shape. Yeah, absolutely, and you said it right. I believe it will be a trade, so fire tornado. Is it going on the Gialis? I believe it will, so one-for-one one trade. You got to make those trades in a tight-knit situation as these. So, hey, Barnshee goes down. Let's see if he, if Neko absolutely needed the Barnshee. Yeah, it wasn't uh, life or death. I think Barnshee was a good trade. I thought the Gialis for the Wolfie was maybe more necessary because now Dubon doesn't really have a clean, clean answer to Volfi. Volfi's double damage against Oshirara into, or not double damage to Koish, but good neutral pressure into Koish. And then those yeah. DVs into Hedgen as well. So now Volfi is a real, real problem for Dubon. I agree with that. The fact that most of Dubon's pressure is special. I mean, barring the Fire Koish. Fire Koish obviously is gonna smack the Volfi very hard physically, but uh, all the rest of the Pryo that Dubon possesses is special, which Volfi loves eating. Very high special defense that's pretty good at just sort of soaking up attacks that you would otherwise expect to do a bit more to the thing, even when you spec it like very aggressively. Um, I, I think that if Neko Blocky is able to lean on that Volfi effectively alongside, I don't know, the Amphitheor. The problem is the token's looking a bit low on the stamina right now. Yeah, so my after rest, I mean, let's think about it. So Hedgen has Fire Tornado online, which is what Neko's thinking. I don't want to bring Amphitheor into that Fire Tornado. So I guess Volfi has to be the only one. Just good, solid damage onto Oshiara or just neutral pressure onto Koish. I don't think you can bring Amphideer unless you're trying to debate and switch for the Volfi. But hey, Volfi doesn't really eat a Fire Tornado all that much better either way. So I think you have to get the damage while you have it. So Volfi does come in. And okay, Fire Koish definitely eats the Plague better than Oshiara. And you get Hellfire Synergy. But to be noted, uh, Team Elusive most likely on Volfi. So Hellfire wouldn't connect. So it has to... Put all the eggs on that fire tornado and it should do some good damage. I'm wondering though, Quetzalcoatl fire tornado, would that be enough to one shot this Volfi here? I think it depends a lot more on how much damage the Hedgen does rather than the Koish. As we said, as I, as I said before, Volfi doesn't have a very high physical defense stat. 
So, like, I'm expecting the Koish to do the majority of the heavy lifting here for that. But um, if this Hedgen is able to get, uh, like, I don't know, like, what, 40% in with this Fire Tornado, then we could be looking at a dead Vulfi. And oh. that is and down to 49 as the plague hits the Koish. It's going to make the cats a hurt a lot more, but it's not It's not going to stop it. Or is it? Or is, this, is, is it, it going to be enough? Oh. It is! <laughs> Ardo X on the Tolkien, bringing it down to 49%, but more than worth it, taking out the Fire Koish before it can even blink. Wow, that was game changing right there. As you said, Quetzalenya would have certainly brought that Volfi down. But of course, that three prio, and that was a huge overexertion. But I believe sometimes you just need to make the play, and Neko Blacky made the play. And yeah, you know, it was 50% of that two cons HP, but man, you saved your Volfi, and now it's gonna be able to do so much against this Oshiara. The question is though, Hurry World Oshiara, Aquatic World went online. Can it do 49% or does Neko just want to read it and swap into Amphideer to eat that aquatic whirlwind quite nicely? I think it's a no-brainer. I think you swap into that Amphideer mm -hmm. 100%. Like, yeah, sure. May maybe you... T uh, I'm pretty sure the hedge you know axed from the fire tornado, right? Yeah, he did. Er, uh, actually, I did not recall, but maybe it was perfect. But I think he has to rest either way unless he wants to overexert quite impressively as well. But yeah, yeah I, right. it might have overexerted just a tad bit. I can't recall. I mean, Amphitir eats that stuff up. It's perfectly happy to take an Aquatic Whirlwind, even from Osiara, and respond in kind with some pretty heavy special attacks. Um, I, I think at this point, Tolkien's done its job. It's been a great, great bird. It's taken down a lot of threats from Juvan's side. I think it, it's perfectly fine just sitting there and resting and letting what be, be. And instead, we see the Volfi stay on the field and just... <laughs> Just T-pose on this Osiara, staring at the face, to eat in the high pressure water, which burns it, but it outspeeds the Osiara because it didn't click its prio. Yeah, very interesting. I think Duvon overthinking it just slightly. I mean, of course, he didn't want to waste the aquatic whirlwind on that Amphideer, but Neko Blocky is saying, you know what? He probably expects it. He's not going to click aquatic whirlwind. Let's leave Wolfie in here. And man, you just did 70% onto that Oshiara. If Oshiara wants to go for a quarter row win now, I mean, the same decision point is here. Does he? J does Neko just swap in Amphideer, which was the obvious decision, which Stuvan tried to read. But you know, if that was the read, I feel like just a quarter row win maybe on the Tukon, but I know he was trying to save the priority move for the Zvolfi specifically. I think at this point, though, the Hedgen can now clean up the Volfi with the burn on the Volfi alongside the um, damage that we've seen on it. It's down at 20%. It is not looking healthy. Uh, yeah, no, a Plasma Beam is more than enough to take out the Fox before it can do anything else. And OCR is kind of free to just click Aquatic Whirlwind on Tolkien. And you know what? Hedgen didn't overexert last turn. So that will be a Fire Tornado online. I don't see a double up though potentially, but you know what? I don't think Amphideer could take down this Hedgen all by himself. And wait, it came in with 91% or did it already have that? Relax. That's interesting. Relax. Oh, relax. Over. That's the thing. That gains 15% of your health back when you're not targeted by an attack. And uh, currently it's Brock in the same way Unnoticed did. So you pop that sucker in at the end of the turn, it gets a little bit of its health back. Yeah, not too shabby. So I think Duvon has this one in the bag. Just a rest on hedge and guarantee a Hellfire Fire Tornado uh, back to back. That should be GG. And man, Neko Blacky played this so, so well. Leaving that Wolfie in. But I think Duvon over here in the end game will be taking it over Neko. But insanely close. Hedgen is just such a great Temtem. My one question here is like, basically, does this Amphitur have what it takes? Now, Amphitir, if it can get the T-Strike off, I think it can actually take down Hedgen. Mm. Um, like it's, it, it has to eat some pretty beefy attacks, but if it lives this Fire Tornado, if this is like a Reactive Vial or something like that, that could be enough. We see it take down the OCR first. And here comes this Fire Tornado. I'm really interested in what damage this is going to do. Oh! No, it's a wipeout. Oh, man. If that was spec to live that, that could have been brought back, but... Uh, no, Duvan just had it with that very aggressive series of plays.